Hi, I'm Kelly at Book and Paper Arts, and today I have an occasional midweek video, What's New in the Studio? I have a studio in Swansea in Wales, which is where I make altered books and art journals. And for those, I am always bringing in new old stuff. And from time to time, I like to just shamelessly show it off and talk about it. To that end, uh, please join me this coming Friday because I have a related video on how you can source and find old paper yourself, even if you don't live in an old country. I get asked about that a lot, and I do have some ideas. So please subscribe to my channel, turn on the notifications, and we'll have some old paper hacks coming up. First, let's look at the good stuff. I am always looking for new old plates of butterflies, flowers, birds, and natural history to use in my work. By accident, last week or a couple of weeks ago, I found out about a series called Our Country. They're Our Country's butterflies and moths, Our Country's flowers, Our Country's wildlife, there is just a whole long series of books from the late 19th century that were all written or compiled by W.J. Gordon. And inside these books, which are from around 1895, 1897-ish, there are these plates. And inside is information to help you actually identify different plants, in this case, flowers. But I got them for the plates. They are just the color, you know, it's 130 years old, and it just pops. Over here is the butterflies and moths. And again, the plates are remarkable. A lot of wings to work with. So while I, I ordered a few of these, I also while doing that and searching and looking online, I accidentally found out about this other series, Birds of Our Country, because I put in Our Country's Birds, and it gave me a suggestion of a completely different series of books. But that'll work. This is from two volumes, and it's not as old. It's from 1928. And a lot of it is photography, and photography from that era is, is fun to look at if you're reading and learning, but it doesn't really take to book arts that well. It doesn't like glue for some reason. So the photographs are not great, but it also has these hand, well, these painted illustrations. And those I thought were amazing. They also have many, many plates of these bird's eggs to help help you identify bird's eggs if you are um, finding those in the country. And I do also love bird's eggs. They make great embellishment to pages, and I like to paint them as well. That is a good photograph. And some more smaller drawings that will look very good in some upcoming book arts. I will also, uh, in a few weeks, be making scans of all of these, of the flowers and the butterflies and moths and the birds. And those scans are going to be 
available through my online newsletter. It comes out monthly and it has lots of good stuff, including free high res scans of vintage paper ephemera. So if you'd like that, please subscribe. The link is in the text below this video. Next are a couple of books that I got at the local secondhand bookstore here in Swansea. This is called The London Literary Reader, Book One. And it was a big print book meant to help children learn to read. It does have some illustrations, but again, the paper is not really uh, going to hold up that well. So instead, I think that what I'm going to be doing is turning this into an altered book. It's nice and thin, and that means I don't have to tear out too many pages. So the spine will be nice and strong, and that's where that's going. This one is called The Queen's Resolve, and it's about Queen Victoria, 1837-1897. And I just love the blue cover. It's, it's pretty distressed, but it's also got this great engraving and filigree curly cues. Now this one does have some kind of cool pictures in here. Now that is a sailor suit. I have that hat by the way. And I will be taking those out carefully and saving those for another project. And then I'm going to be turning this into an art journal. I want to stop for a second and say that I also get asked a lot about when is it okay to turn a book into something else? When is it okay to cut up a book and make it into an altered book or an art journal or what you will? And uh, the answer is it's a long story. So I have a video where I talk about that at length. And if you are curious to find out, I will link to that video in the text below this one. Short version is sometimes a book can't be saved. As charming as this is, the uh, binding has had it in this case. And I just don't think it can, can be saved well enough to, to go into another generation or two. So I'm just going to turn it into something else and then it will be loved. What I'm going to do is take out all the pages and do something similar to this old cover, which is I have filled it with echo prints and mixed papers, and now it's an art journal. And this one is for sale in my online shop, and this one will be next week. I think I'm gonna go with a blue Surrey silk ribbon here. This is a book that I will not be taking apart. It's from 1760, and it's Spectacle de la Nature, or Nature Delineated. It's basically a book about husbandry, uh, farming, and cultivating plants. Because it's from the uh, eight, 18th century, it still has something that's really cool, which is the letter S. is sometimes written as an S that we know it, that's S Sierra, but it's also often written as an F, so it looks like this says philosophical confirmations, but that's just the way they formed the S's back in the day, and it's philosophical conversations. Here is dialogue number one of flowers. And why I absolutely had to have this and it's mine is because of the plates. I collect these and I've rarely seen such, um, just, they're enchanting. This is an anemone and you see it in different phases of its growth. This is on old laid paper and you can actually feel the print. This one is of a carnation. Here's a chapter on olive growing. I think the reason I was able to get this book in my budget at all was because it's got some damage to it like that. 
but I will be able to mend that. It will be good enough for me anyway. Of herbs and roots. And I don't know what you would have done with that. I guess I'll have to read the philosoph philosophical conversation and find out. Of corn and grain, of vines. This is a chapter on winemaking. And it shows an illustration of a press and an apple mill. I, as I said, I will not be taking this apart. I'm going to keep it for myself. But what I'm going to do is try to find a way to make scans of these plates and without taking them out of the book. And those will be avail available in uh, a few weeks. So uh, stay tuned. I'll let you know about that. This is a little harder to explain. These are reliquaries. That is, they are containers for relics. Relics are the remains of saints or something that saints have touched and uh, then they are put into a reliquary to hold them. And back in the day, these were uh, things that people would uh, find as devotional objects. I work in a lot of old churches and I often see these in very, very old churches. can see, I think you can see this says uh, Saint Theodore, Saint Urbain, and it has this beautiful old paper quilling with gilt paper. This is from the 18th century. I thought I was going to turn these into portable shrines, but I'm not sure now. I just need to look at them and do some homework and think about them. They are truly beautiful and make me think of things. On a less mysterious note, I have these flashcards of uh, Chinese characters. Again, I got these in the secondhand bookstore and they are flashcards to help with learning Chinese. Sorry which I am, see it's, it's on the back, it's got what they, some of the symbols correspond to. I am not really looking to learn Chinese, although it is very beautiful. I do, however, really love lettering and printing and writing with pens and ink. So these really talk to me. They're, they're just beautiful and fun. I'm going to be using them in art journals and uh, collage, and I think I might make them into teeny tiny little tags for teeny tiny little pockets. Finally, I have some cards. These are called silks because they were hand embroidered on silk. And these were a thing in around the time of World War I in the 19 teens. They would be embroidered by women, and they were sort of a patriotic thing, and they were also sold to soldiers who were serving, in this case, in France. These are from the teens, and some are from the 20s. They're a little bit later. This is St. Catherine. It's got a little ribbon here, and you can write it as a message. And again, you can see that it's just embroidered on this very fine organdy silk. This is Bonfet. This one, this one is exquisite. I collect these and it's the first time I've seen this. It's uh, not embroidered, it's actually painted, hand painted on the silk. It has a little card that says St. Catherine. I must look up who she was. And it has this teeny tiny little baby handkerchief in the pocket. These will be included in my next batch of French ephemera vintage paper bundles. If you want to see what those look like, there's a link to those in my online shop, 
below this video. Uh, okay, thank you for watching. Please join me on Friday for a video on how to find old paper. And until then, happy making.